Okay, today we're going to be doing how I gear my Greek civilization. Some of the things that you see throughout this civilization and all the others will be identical. As some gears are best for every situation, all the time. Now, how I gear things does not necessarily mean that's how you have to gear things. It's just is how I run it and how I think things work best. But I want to make clear that you guys should do things that is comfortable to you guys and your game style and gameplay. With that said, now if you look at my farms, you will see this wall. By this wall, it is in one of your cities, I think Sparta. It's been a while, so I don't quite remember. And this wall you'll see on almost all my buildings besides a select few because it just is cheaper. There are things out there that have not dropped yet with a um, better cost efficient so things cost less but they just haven't dropped and this is the best of the best that you can get your hands on right now. These walls are not the best. Level 31 is at 11.8 and I only use these walls for Greek for so let me reword that because I, that's not going to make sense. These walls are only used once in the Greek civilization, and I use them on my farms because God only knows I don't like paying a lot of wood for 20 farms. But I do use these walls in every civilization, and later on I will show you that. Now, moving to the town center, each building has its pros and its cons, as we all know. And the town center has certain things that you must have and the number one thing is is the Aries manual if you can't get the 8.8 .8, get the next one below it's a 7.1 it's very common and pretty cheap and this will help you up do all your upgrades and age and build villagers faster this is the one thing that we all should do we all should have at all times now these next three things are what I use, but I'm going to explain what other people use also. Now, the, sh the shield wall, on all my town centers, it's this exact same thing. I like town centers to be strong, to take abuse, because in certain maps, like 4 versus 4 skirmish, I might get attacked, I want to be able to hold off, and legend pirates your um, town center gets attacked very early it's good to have somewhere to defend um, elite recaptures Centers, sometimes your town caught up and pushed back and you need them to um, hide your villagers in so I go for strength nine out of ten times your town center is not there for uh, a weapon but it's there as protection so use these walls these arrows you would have to find on a map that drops level 35 plus. Um, they are very rare to come by. I just suggest you don't use any real arrow like um, the silver pointed arrows that do uh, increased train time because on this you're putting this on your building not on your unit so it won't work. So the arrow, silver point arrows do not work. Please do not use them. You'll just be wasting your mo money and a, a slot on your town center that could be used other places. You could get arrows that add range or Athena's that add DPS, but as I said, I go for health. Going on with the health theme, I get this bow. This bow and that wall is craftable, only $1,000, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, some people say get the bow that um, costs less resources. It starts with a P. I don't remember the name. But if you add that bow on, it's going to cost you a good amount of money. Way more than $1,000. I don't know what the bow runs for these days, but it's way more than 1000 And it's only going to take four resources away. So if it's 1000 wood, it'll be 998 wood. It's not worth it. You can get those four resources each very quickly. And it's just something stupid that people think 
is good and it's not and it's I think I got it once I tried it and right after I tried it right after I bought it for like something ridiculous like 20,000 or something like that I vendored it because it's useless to me I putting it on anything would be just a waste moving to your villagers for Greek I have the hammer of Keveth. I like the resource and the build time. For Greek, there's really nothing better. When it comes to uh, chitons, you have the wood or you have the food. And for me, I've tried the wood and the food on every civilization. And so far, wood is overall the better one on, a, on them all. Some people might say, hey Steve, now wait a minute. Gibson berries is helpful. And you are correct. But one thing you're missing is in all maps in Age of Empires, a strong economy and a faster economy is key. Sure. Later on in the game those that food's gonna be useful. But you first off you need to be able to A have wood to be build farms, to build houses to build everything and if you don't have those resources at the bare minimum you're going to be useless and it's not going to matter what food you have on a chitin if you don't have the resources of wood to build it so I guess what I'm saying is if you get an early wood increase you're going to have a faster quicker economy in the long run now my spearman I um, the spear now has I believe if I remember correctly, 9.8 um, damage to Calvary. This one's an older one, so it predates it. And they let us keep our old stats, and they work the same. Um, but the newer one works probably better than this one. I am just somebody that likes snare to slow down the enemy while my archers and gastros kill off the rest. Um, but I'd use this spear. Or any other really but any legend spear will do I mean you could use the critical spear but I like this one of course armor that has cavalry armor there's armor out there that is epic that is 71% health and I think almost literally 16% infantry armor but this one's the cavalry one, but I'm talking about to replace that one if you do choose to. Okay, maybe that'll help some. I turned off some of the fans. It's cooled down here, so it might not be as staticky for you guys. And moving on to my spearman, I have a spear that has um, snare to it. I don't know what the bonus is to this one now because I know they removed the snare stats from everything but if you have anything with snare from past it will still work but it, pretty much any legend spear will do you just fine even the critical one if you choose to go that way of course because it is a pikeman I want cavalry armor so I can take out cavalry easier with all my civilizations I have one of every fourth slot in my inventory somewhere. I find the unit that it's best fitted for and I use it on that unit so that's how you're, you're gonna see these things. If you see a training sword or a boot or something and you're like why does he have that? It's because I want one of everything so just in case I do ever need that I have it. My hot lights, I continue with the snare theme. Now this spear I know has the same damage but cavalry damage on top of it. I go with a shield that has the best health in game. This breastplate has the best health and in infantry armor combo. There is an epic one that has 71% health. If you can't afford this one you can try to get your hands on that one there's not much of a difference and then my leg greaves for more health move slower but that's okay if you are in the alliance that has greaves in it 
it's, I think it's like 19, 18% health, but no handicap of movement. Now when it comes to my two-handed swordsman, I wanted a unit early on in game that could do massive damage because I'm only going to use him in age two. There would be no reason to use him in age three or age four, especially age four, because I have a hoplite. So this unit I, ma I made sure it was A, quick, so I have legend boots on him, B, strong, and didn't want to put a raw stam shield on him because I'm not going to use him that often. So I have... DPS blade, Ares war shield, DPS chest armor, and then boots, so they're quick to get out in battle fast. Now when it comes to my toxins, there's two bows you can use toxins. that would be beneficial for a toxin. One, the long bow that I have for range, or the other bow that has infantry bonus damage. One of the two. But most ragged units, you're going to want range over that anyway. So I suggest you get this. Plus you have your range arrows. Plus a tunic of some sort of DPS. Higher the better. And for my bowmen, because my power, it's not a power unit, I try to make them as cheap as possible for early age attacks in the game. My Hippocons, I make sure they have the Sword of Means, so they have very good DPS, and so they have some infantry armor. A lot of people like to use that sword that has 40% more hit points, but has no real damage to it. And what I want to say about that is, why? If you want a tank unit, use a Hoplite. That's a tank unit. If you want a unit that's well-rounded and that can attack somebody quickly, that's what a Hippocon's for. Making a tank unit out of a Hippocon is just a bad idea. Why? It makes no sense. It's a two-population already. You're just wasting a unit. So with that said, and if you don't want to get armor, then get the critical sword. Or even get the DPS sword. But that 40% hit point sword for a Hippocon is just a bad idea. You're going to die before you can actually get enough hits in on the enemy. You're you're gonna use you're gonna lose more troops by the time you get the same amount of DPS in with a stronger blade, I guess is what I'm saying. I got the Rostam shield plus Saragon horse armor. So what I have here is a boost to infantry armor, damage and critical with some health. Also, now infantry, I mean, um, ragged attacks are lower, are lowered. And here I mix it. Mares on how I want to play. Do I want to go with a gauntlet to be a little stronger? Or do I want to put the legend greaves on to be a more hit point? See, either one of these is okay because 8% more DPS is not a lot. 54% DPS is a lot. Now moving on to your pelts, I don't use this unit often. And when I do, it's usually in a skirmish map. Um, so I want to make them very heavily, I, I want them to do the best at what they're, they're designed, designed to, to kill ragged units. So, I have the legendary javelin, Ajax shield, and the reason why you get an Ajax shield is because if you do come across archers or gastros that have more of a range and you need to get closer, the pierce armor is what's key here. And it's 12.1%. It gives me a little more damage, but that pierce armor is key. And then I got bonus armor protection. And then I have a gauntlet. Now moving to my cavalry that has a spear that I don't know how to pronounce. The Crete Heavy Spear. I suggest you put, if you play Crete a lot, you put this spear on everything you can. The whole purpose of this unit is to kill cavalry. 
It's a 22.4 spear. It gives you good life, and it gives you cavalry armor. That's why I like it. It's because there's spears out there that give you life and cavalry DPS, but this one gives you cavalry armor. So when you're trying to kill the cavalry unit, it protects you from that. And then I also threw on something for piercing armor because I want to be able to protect my cells from, you know, not just one type of unit. And because horses are fast, I put Greaves on him, which doesn't slow him down very quickly at all. Now my ballistas, um, I have wheels on here for my alliance, so not everybody's going to have that. Now ballistas after patch have gotten much weaker. So you're going to want to make your ballistas as strong as possible, not range. Now, this over here to the right, you'll see, the long arm is 77.1%. 70, not much difference, so you would get a range arm, you would use the elephant arm. This is one where you would use it, because on maps like Soli, that 7.1% is needed to outrange their ballistas. If you do not have that 7.6%, excuse me, 7.6% on, you will not outrange their ballistas and they will hit you. So this is the range and DPS um, arm you would use, plus the plates with the best DPS, plus the best DPS wheels. And if you do not have this league, that is okay. Heavy cedar beams is what you would use. It will cost you more. You'll get more health, plus 18.1% damage. Now, when it comes to battering rams, they're not my most well geared unit, but I try to As gear them all types. the same. And battering rams, I go for speed. As you see, the ram head's not the strongest, but it's 6% speed, plus 4.1% speed plus 9.2 percent speed. So the ram actually moves quickly enough. Now most of these buildings you will see has the exact same gear. This one has an Aries because I had an extra and I wanted to put it on what I use the most. And eventually I'll slowly swap all these out with Aries maybe or maybe I'll sell them. Okay, now when it comes to houses, there's two styles of play here. One, you can build them quickly. Or two, you can build them cheaply. Remember how I had my farm set up? You could do that. But houses don't cost a hundred wood. They cost less. So you're not going to save a whole heap load from it. So, with all my civilizations besides one, I use build time increase so they get built faster so I can move on. My market's the same as most buildings, as is my siege factory, and same with my market. I do the training manual on there because of the upgrades, it upgrades all my research quicker. Now my lookout, uh, my, my watch post, you want to put line of sight gear on. Of course, lookouts of Olympus is the best you can get. This is not the best one. I believe 23 is the best one, but 20 is very affordable and will give you great line of sight. I mean, you have 44.5 plus 45.7, so you're going to see a very good distance. Okay, guard towers. This has been a very controversial topic all around the forum and has had some good debates. There's three things that got people debating. One, the iron wall joints 11.5 or 11.8 percent that people put here. Or um, blueprints that people put here. Or wall joints that people put here. These are the three things that people use. And I'm going to go through the pros and cons of each and every one of them. First, the blueprints. They build your towers quicker, so if you need them up fast, you can get them up fast. Your iron wall joints. 
they take 11%, 11.5% off your total cost, and they go up normal. Uh, Kevith, though, and the only benefit here is that they are 18.5% cheaper, but it takes you almost one and a half times the speed. You know, so the speed, then almost half more. And here's the thing. If you take one villager with a hammer that has, like the uh, craftsman hammer that has build speed. Now remember, it has to have build speed, because if it doesn't have build speed, this is going to take you a very long time to build this. If you have build speed of 14%, that 42% is not 42% anymore, it's less. I have the Kevit, so it's 20 some, 20, what is it, 29%. So it's 29% less than that. If you have the Blessed Hammer, that 44% isn't even there anymore because that Blessed Hammer is 45%. So you're not building at 44.2% more. It's less than that, first off. And second off, any map that you play that towers are a factor, we'll use Papos for example, it doesn't matter. You can take four villagers and tell them all build one tower and they will build one tower or two towers each before they ever attack you. So the tower will be built, the tower will be cheaper, and it will be less time that you have to spend on collecting stone and put on a resource that you need like food or wood or even gold. But whatever way you want to play, I'm not saying it's the best, but I'm just saying that's how I do it. Titan walls, I think 98, 99% of the community uses them. There's really nothing better. Um, when it comes to arrows, there's two ways to go with this. One is pure damage, is what I'm doing, or the other is range, with the legend arrows with range. Both work, I just prefer damage. This bow, though, is a must on all your defenses, for your forts and your towers. It'll help kill the infantry off quicker that come close to your bases. And as you see, the same walls, this used to be my old Ares manual, that a level 37, and I'm just moving it down the line. Same walls. Okay, caravans. Your goal in a caravan is move. Forget about that trade percentage stuff, the craft zero out there, that gives you 20%. That 20% means nothing. You want speed in these suckers because faster it can take food, I mean gold, from your market to your town center means faster it's in your coffers. Common sense. And then you have a speed tunic. And then you have a speed hat. If you are my alliance, you can get, which I don't have, a 7.1% movement speed gear. Maybe it's better by a lot, maybe it's not. I don't know, I don't feel like spending that much money for something. When it comes to fishing ships, this, I just find something that has at least a 15%-ish um, food gathering. I mean, it, this isn't the best. I would probably say the best is the 20% one. If there's something with speed that I'm just not thinking of, that would be the best one. But this is what I use. It's not the best, but fa either faster or more resources than what I have, it would be bass. Fat. Yeah, tongue tied. Would be better. This is not the best arrow. What would be best here would be the Hades arrow. Very rare to find. If you can find it, great. 
This is the second fastest plate. There's one faster that was just released earlier. And the hull of the dolphin is the best for fishing because they're not going to attack anything. So health doesn't really matter. You want them cheaper. Now when it comes to transports, your key main goal on transports is speed. Nothing more, nothing less. I believe that this gaff stick is the best for movement speed. Not many of us trade with our ships. It's very rare, so movement speed would be the way to go. And these are the Hades arrows that I was talking about, plus the same hull. And then Epic Sails, if you really wanted to pimp it out, you could go for the Legend Oars, which cost an extremely amount more for 9.2 speed that I just won't pay that kind of price for a transport ship. My priest. I like to get my priest have to have speed, so this is the uh, equipment that I'm using. I use uh, this robe because I want to try to keep archers from killing me. And then, of course, sandals. This bow, I don't like. When Legends first came out, this was the first legendary bow I bought because it was available. And I haven't beaten a legendary quest yet. And the critical hit doesn't hit often, but I'm not going to vendor it for an epic higher rank, uh, higher DPS bow. I already paid the money for it, so I might as well use it on something I don't use often. Plus range arrows, range armor, and what would be better would be the Hull of Levathon, but as I said, I'm not going to spend that kind of money on a unit that I very rarely use. I like the Ballista Trains. They're fun. So what you want to do with the Ballista Train is A, get this arm because you need as much range as possible for two reasons. One, so you can stay far away from the enemy. And two, so you can shoot further inland on an enemy. Um, Titan arm would be the second best, 14% range. So if you can't find or afford this, that's okay. And then, of course, you go with the theme of range. And these suckers are expensive, so I don't mind waiting the extra time to build them. Now my forts. As Greek has nothing building out of the forts, I use the legendary blueprints. I use the titan walls, the range arrows. Oh no, I changed that. That's right. At the I, was, I finally yes. got and we can thank Devil Play God for that. He donated them to me out of the goodness of his heart. And I am very grateful for that because these arrows combined with this bow gives you a big infantry bonus damage. And I've tried them on one map already and they just cut through infantry like butter. Now when it comes to the paladins, I know that's not what they're called, but that's what I've always called them, so I continue. When it comes to the Paladins, range has always been key. Range, 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 range. But after the new patch, range isn't key anymore. Isn't that such a priority. I mean, with you could do with Teemo and with range arms and range gear and everything like that, hit over 110 range. I found when I use a, pa a Paladin and I want to move through an army and I am soloing and I'm just by myself I only want one or two of them maybe three so I want to be able to kill buildings quicker see where I'm going with that I want that legend arm to just pound on that wall so I can break the wall down quicker I want to be able to get in faster so that's why I use the legend arm now, range it does matter to me still though so I still use the, the range armor plus the movement speed, and then the wheels. If you don't have the wheels, 
You can use heavy cedar beams, or you can use legendary wheels to move faster, or what have you. Scout gear. You're going to want this sword. Line of sight is 10.3 more. 16's max, and I think it's 10.5. This is a level 25, adds more line of sight. Level 26 is max. I don't know what the max line of sight is. Level tw Your goal here is a level 23 and up. And, of course, Lens of Means is the best with 70 some odd percent. But if you have th these three things, you have more LOS than you know what to do with. Lens of Means is overrated if you can get all three of these. And my wonder is just geared to have gear on it. This unit is very rarely used, as you can see. It's geared with, you know, to kill archers. Oh, what gear is this? <laughs> it's been a while. This gear used to be very popular almost a year ago. I very rarely use this unit. This is the old armor that I used to put on my um, Hippocons because of the infantry armor, melee cavalry armor, and then the bonus protection. It gives no hit points, but the armor was so high, and it was young in the game, and I liked it. And then plus gauntlets. Now when it comes to your gastros, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to debate about the three bows to use. And that's not the topic of this. I don't want to get too much into that. I'll do a quick run through of the three. There's the Titan bow that's pure damage. There's the Huron bow. I think that's how it's called. If not, I'm sorry. Um, that is damage. I don't know if it has range. I don't think it does, but I think it's mainly damage and infantry, arm, infantry damage. And it's stackable. I was told. Safe Base told me that that was stackable. But when it comes to the Zeus bow, I have always found, and I always will find, and I have tested all three bows out, in range just rules when it comes to a gastro. Now range might not rule when it comes to bowmen, because you get your shot off and they're right there anyway. You're, you're bo the the bowman versus bowman type thing, you're really close to each other anyway, so maybe more DPS would be better if we had the range of a bowman. But if you watch my videos, and you take a look at my videos, and you see how fast I cut through infantry, and how fast I cut through um, archers, and even how decent I am during cavalry attacks, range is key, hands down. I, I, I just don't know what more to say. Then, of course, range arrows. And this robe was donated to me for free from Devil Play God also. It's the highest damage robe in the game. And I decided to go with the helmet because, A, my gastros are strong enough. In all my games, you'll see me, A, use this or the cheaper gauntlets. So if you look at some of my maps and you see how easy it is for me to kill things, imagine taking this away and adding Ramses. Or just even this 32 here. It, you become even more stronger. My fire ships are the best in the game, hands down. Has the best oil. Has the best armor. You need that crush armor to stop the catapult ships to hit you. You really need this armor. And then the whole level thumb. Now, let me look at my gear. Other things that I use that is not geared on. And the only thing I can see is this spear I use on my hoplite when I want to do a meat shield. Um, what else do I have here? It doesn't look like anything else. This is supposed to be tested. I haven't gotten to it. This is good if you want to cause a lot of damage and don't care about um, taking hits. 
which that two-handed swordsman is what I use that on sometimes. Athena's, I use this on my Hippocons sometimes. Um, I don't see anything else that I am using often. So with that said, I believe I covered everything that I use and how I gear Greek. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line on my page or on my YouTube.